Okay, let's see if we can figure out how much of one phase and how much of another phase there is. Specifically, we'll look at the case of how much ice there is and how much liquid syrup there is in water sugar. But once we derive the equation, we can apply it to any system and we'll apply it a little bit later to the iron carbon system. Um, okay, so in our previous video, we had come up with this hypothetical example, 20 grams of sugar added to 80 grams of water to make a 28% sugar syrup that we then cooled down to minus five. So I want to consider this point right here and what I'd like to do is I'm going to go and say look let's take the system here to get us all on the same page what's it going to look like well it's going to have some liquid right there's the liquid but in that liquid there's also going to be some solid so there's our little ice cubes right if you will that's what I'm trying to draw there so there's some liquid and there's some solid ice <clears throat> and what I'd like to address is what's the mass of the solid and what is the mass of the liquid you appreciate they have to add to the total mass which in this case we said was 100 grams <clears throat> but what are then how else could we express it well we could also express it as a fraction we could say what's the weight fraction that is solid and that would just be the mass of the solid divided by the total mass which is the mass of the solid plus the mass of the liquid okay, we can multiply that by hundred percent if we like and we'd end up with <coughs> something in weight percentage <coughs> we can also define the weight fraction of the liquid in a similar manner right mass of the liquid divided by the total mass <coughs> and noting that the weight fraction of the solid plus the weight fraction of the liquid, what does that have to equal? There's only two, 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 two phases, right? Solid and liquid. So they have to add to one. If we actually, you know what, I'm going to scratch that percentage there, just leave them as a fraction. They have to add to one. That would be a little bit easier. Okay, great. So that's what we're going to work with. And what I'd like to do is just start off with a mass balance on sugar. Okay, we've added some sugar to it, 20 grams in this particular case, but we're going to be a bit more general than that. And so we'd say, look, what's the mass of sugar total? Well, that is the 20 grams. Well, it has to go into the ice, mass of sugar in the ice, plus the mass of sugar in the syrup, doesn't it? It can only go to those two phases. <clears throat> well, we can also express this mass, though, as the mass of ice times the composition of the ice, right? If you've got a certain number of grams of ice, the composition is in weight percent sugar. If you multiply by the composition, you will get grams of sugar plus the mass of the liquid phase. I'm going to call it syrup here. The liquid phase times the composition of the syrup. Okay, I'm going to give myself a little bit more room here if you don't mind. So that, that, that makes some sense. Now we could divide both sides by the total mass. So I'm going to write this out here. Total sugar. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and divide here by the mass total. Mass total. Right, and remember what's the mass total? The mass total is the mass of the sugar plus the mass um, <coughs> sorry, the mass of the uh, yeah, the mass of the uh, solid plus the mass of the liquid. So we've got mass total here. I'm going to divide mass total. So I haven't done anything you know, fancy here, but we see something interesting, right? What's this? Mass of sugar total over mass total. Well, that was what we saw up here, wasn't it? Mass of the sugar over the total mass. That's 28%. That's our overall composition. Okay, that's our overall composition, so that's handy. We can rewrite this as overall composition. And then what's this mass of the ice divided by mass total? Well, that's the mass of solid divided by the total mass. That's the weight fraction of the solid. Okay, weight fraction of the solid. And then similarly, you know, we're on a roll here. The mass of this syrup over the total mass is the mass, that's, that's this one, the mass of the liquid over the total mass. 
So I'm going to just go ahead and write that as a weight fraction of the liquid. <clears throat> so, and then I'll have to maintain the composition there. Composition and, uh, you know what, sorry, to be consistent here, I'm going to start calling it, um, down here I'm going to call that syrup, uh, solid, and I'm going to call this one liquid. Okay. And, um, all right, so now this is good. Now we can also use this expression. All right, so we could write this, we write that as weight fraction of the liquid equals 1 minus weight fraction of the solid. And then substitute that in here. So we have now C naught equals weight fraction of the solid times composition of the solid plus 1 minus weight fraction of the solid times composition of the liquid. I'll multiply that out, white fraction of the solid times composition of the solid plus composition of the liquid minus composition of the liquid times the weight fraction of the solid. Again, just give myself a little bit more room and factor out weight fraction of the solid. We've got weight fraction of the solid, C solid minus C liquid, okay, plus C liquid or weight fraction of the solid equals C naught minus C liquid over C solid minus C liquid. <clears throat> now quick little check which one is larger in this case C naught or C liquid? C naught or C liquid? C liquid is a little larger so that's a negative number so we can clean this up a little bit similar to CS is smaller than CL, so this is negative on top and bottom. So why don't we just clean that up, multiply it by top, top and bottom by negative one, and say, look, the weight fraction of the solid is equal to C liquid minus C naught over C liquid minus C solid. And that's a great expression, it's useful to us for calculating the weight fraction of one particular phase. I could have derived it on the other side, but let me show you what that, what that shows. C liquid minus C, C uh, naught. What is that? Roll back up here. It tells us that we're trying to see C liquid minus C naught. We're trying to find out the weight fraction of the solid. The weight fraction of the solid is going to be nothing more than the length of the opposite side of this line we drew here divided by the total length. So you could, in fact, use a ruler if you wanted to. It's a linear axis. <clears throat> and take the opposite side, always the opposite side. So we want the weight fraction of the liquid. It's going to be that side divided by the entire length. And this, you can kind of picture this as a fulcrum. And, and so we call this, this red line a lever. And so it's for this reason that what we just derived down here is called the lever rule. And again, if we want to finally just make this a little bit more general, the lever rule tells us in a most general form for any two-phase region, the weight fraction of one particular phase is equal to the opposite side of the lever divided by the total length of the lever. That's the lever rule and there's no magic to it, you know, trickery or anything, right? It was derived entirely based on the mass balance of one component. I did it for water sugar, but we could have done it for any system we wanted, any binary system in the two-phase region. Okay, so it's a hugely useful equation and always remember it's the opposite side from the phase you're interested in. Okay, thanks a lot.